Hi everyone and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Sid Cowley. I am just finishing off my PhD at the University of York working in plasma physics and I'm working at the Fusion Industry Association affiliate member DigiLab on Fusion and AI. Today is Wednesday the 21st of February and I'm here to give you your Fusion News Roundup. So stories today include 1. UK nuclear fusion reactor sets new world record for energy output. 2. Thea Energy raises $20 million Series A for pixel-inspired fusion power plants. 3. What the US needs to do to win the fusion race. And 4. Fusion bridging science and technology gaps to bring fusion power to the grid. And of course, I'll have some bonuses at the end for you. 1. UK nuclear fusion reactor sets new world record for energy output. For our first story today, we've got a big and I have to say quite unexpected one that's been in a lot of news outlets from the BBC to New Scientist. It comes from the UK Atomic Energy Authority or UKAEA here in Oxfordshire and covers the Joint European Taurus or JET, one of the largest tokamaks currently in operation and one of the only tokamaks to be using active deuterium tritium fusion fuel. Now for many of you, JET may sound a little familiar. Since in 2021, JET broke the record for fusion energy produced in a single controlled fusion experiment with 59 megajoules of fusion energy produced. The breakthrough came with a huge press conference and incredible attention from around the world. And it was quite an important time for the result as well, because after 40 years of operation and over 105,000 pulses, JET had its final experiment back in 2023 and it's now shut down. However, last week, it was announced that JET quietly broke their fusion energy record again. <laughs> the shot in question lasted 5.2 seconds and reached 69 megajoules of fusion energy output. This was greater than the previous record of 59 megajoules and absolutely smashed the old record of 22 megajoules achieved in 1997. So I'm sure you could tell, I personally can't help but smile at this announcement. It just can't be overstated just how central JET has been to fusion energy development. And this achievement is a perfect way, I think, to end its historic contributions. And I'm not the only one who thinks so. UK Minister for Nuclear and Networks, Andrew Bowie said, JET's final fusion experiment is a fitting swan song after all the groundbreaking work that has gone into the project since 1983. So I think I speak for the whole Fusion community when I say thank you to everyone who's worked at JET over the years. What a brilliant way to say goodbye. 2. Thea Energy raises $20 million Series A for pixel-inspired fusion power plants. Our second story comes from TechCrunch and covers the announcement that the Fusion startup and FIA member Thea Energy has raised $20 million US dollars in a Series A funding round. Thea Energy is a fusion startup spun out of the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, or PBPL, in 2022. The company is aiming to build fusion stellarators, magnetic fusion devices that use twisted magnetic field coils to confine a plasma. Now, stellarators are typically easier to operate than tokamaks because they don't have a plasma current needed to generate the twisted magnetic fields that are required to confine the plasma. And this lack of a plasma current helps with loads of things like having no disruptions. However, stellarators are also typically much harder to build, mainly due to these difficult to manufacture twisted magnetic field coils. Thea, however, are proposing to build stellarators more easily using an array of planar, easy to manufacture coils and using computer algorithms to control these coils to make complex structures of the magnetic field. In fact, Brian Burson, co-founder and CEO of Thea, when discussing the challenges of Stellarator Fusion said, what we have done is we've taken as much of it as possible out of the hardware and pushed it onto control systems. So this funding will hopefully help Thea Energy build EOS, a Stellarator which will be a proof of concept machine and a neutron source for applications such as tritium breeding. Then after EOS, Thea hopes to have a demonstration plant sometime in the 2030s. Three, what the US needs to do to win the fusion race. Our third story today is an opinion piece by Yili Badragarti from the US political news outlet, The Hill. It's a piece that covers the great strides that the United States has taken in fusion energy development, 
ranging from achieving net fusion gain for the first time in a controlled experiment at the National Ignition Facility in 2022, to being the home of many leading companies in private fusion. However, the piece warns that other competitors to the US are making more concerted commitments to fusion. In particular, last year China formed a National Fusion Energy Consortium and a Fusion Energy Corporation to lead national research efforts into fusion. In addition, the Chinese State Council stated that it believes controlled nuclear fusion is the only direction for the future of energy. On the other hand, the article emphasizes that many of America's allies are also creating stronger commitments to fusion. For example, Germany recently announced more than a billion dollars in additional research funding for fusion, and the UK revealed its new Fusion Futures program with over 650 million pounds of additional funding. The article warns that the US needs to keep up with these committed national programs or it's in danger of losing its place as a leader in fusion. Four, fusion bridging science and technology gaps to bring fusion power to the grid. Our final story today comes from the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory in the US and discusses a recent visit from Jean-Paul Elaine, Associate Director of the Fusion Energy Sciences or FES program at the Department of Energy. During his visit, Director Elaine overviewed a vision and roadmap to get to a competitive fusion ecosystem in the U.S. with a strong scientific foundation. And making the U.S. a competitive force in fusion seemed to be a priority for Elaine. As he said, we are in a race for fusion energy and the world is not standing still. So during his talk, Elaine stressed the importance of several things, including partnerships highlighting international collaborations such as the EDER program, as well as collaborations within the US, like national labs such as Princeton or Oak Ridge, working with the private fusion industry. But Elaine also highlighted that as fusion gets deployed, we need to develop a much larger fusion workforce. And we need to do that through outreach programs to people from a diverse array of backgrounds. Speaking at Princeton, he said, we need to be agents of empathy. We need to be able to go out there personally and be able to bring people in. Right, well that's all for our main stories today, but of course I have some bonuses before you leave. For our first bonus story today, we have a blog post from the Fusion Energy Insights Organization, which hosted our own Andrew Holland for a Q&A session earlier this month. The blog highlights fusion industry and outlook trends for 2024, with a big focus on where fusion is concentrated globally right now and in what regions fusion development is growing the most. For our second bonus story, we have an announcement from the UK Atomic Energy Authority that the UK government is partnering with Canadian nuclear laboratories to develop technologies related to the all-important tritium fuel cycle for fusion. Right, well that's all for Fusion News this week. I really hope you've enjoyed, and before you go, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more things Fusion. And of course, if you want to take a deep dive into any of these stories, their links will be in the description. That's all from me. See you next time.